Dopamine is the drug of choice for cardiogenic shock. Shock is a medical emergency in which the organ and tissue of the body not receiving an adequate flow of blood. This deprived organ and tissue of oxygen carry in the blood and allows the buildup of waste product. Shock can result in serious damage or even death. There are three major categories of shock, namely cardiogenic shock, hypovolemic shock, and also the septic shock. But today, we are going to focus on cardiogenic shock. Cardiogenic shock is a problem associated with the heart's functioning. It can be caused by any disease which prevents the heart muscle from pumping strongly and consistently enough to circulate the blood normally. This will reduce the blood flow and significantly reduce the cardiac output. So, what is the treatment of the cardiogenic shock? The treatment of the cardiogenic shock depends on its cause. The prescribed drug aims to enhance the heart contractility, prevent the formation of the blood clot, and also to treat the heart attack. In order to enhance the heart contractility, dopamine and dobutamine can be used as a drug of choice to treat cardiogenic shock. However, dopamine is the preferred agent in patients with hypotensions. Thus, it is recommended as the first-line vasopressor. Before discussing this topic in details, first, let's take a look how the dopamine has been discovered. In 1910, dopamine has first discovered by Josh Barger and James Evans. Dopamine is an intermediate product in the biosynthesis of noradrenaline. It is synthesized from the amino acid tyrosine. Tyrosine enters into nerve cell by tyrosine sodium pump. Tyrosine then converts into DOPA. DOPA will then undergo the decarboxylation process to produce dopamine. The dopamine enters the vesicle and it is converted into noradrenaline. However, in 1957, Scientists named Arvid Carlson discovered that dopamine not only a precursor to noradrenaline, but it can also act as neurotransmitter in the brain. After Carlson inject rabbits with drug recipient that prevent the uptake of neurotransmitter, the rabbit is then temporarily paralyzed. He expected lipodopa could be converted into noradrenaline in the brain to restore the chemical imbalance. However, when he examined the chemicals in the brain, he discovered that lipodopa not converted into noradrenaline but into dopamine. In 1960, Leon Gorbert discovered that dopamine also has an effect outside the brain. During dopamine infusion, dopamine can cause a remarkably increase in cardiac output without changing either heart rate or mean arterial blood pressure. Today, dopamine is becoming the most widely used drug to treat cardiogenic shock, especially in the emergency department. It remains essential drug in intensive care unit ICU. Now, let's proceed to the medicinal chemistry of dopamine and dopamine receptor. The molecular formula of dopamine is C8H7NO2 with molecular mass of 153.181. The melting point is 128 degrees Celsius. The onset of action for dopamine is 5 minutes and it takes less than 10 minutes for dopamine to give their effect. It is then metabolized by MAO and COMT. The half-life of dopamine is 2 minutes and it will be excreted in urine. The structure of dopamine molecule that participate in biological activity are hydroxy group and also the secondary amine. Dopamine molecules will act on alpha adrenergic receptor which is made up of several amino acids such as serine, phenylalanine, aspartate and also asparagine. Basically, serine contains hydroxy group while aspartate has carbonyl group. Thus, when the dopamine approach the receptor, hydroxy group of dopamine will form hydrogen bond with OH of serine. Meanwhile, 
NH3 will protonate to form an ionic bond with the anionic sites of aspartate amino acid on the receptor. The protonated nitrogen of dopamine become an electron deficient group and thus any ionic site which contain carbonyl ion is electron rich will interact with the protonated nitrogen of dopamine. Dopamine receptor also has a flat hydrophobic area that can react with phenyl ring on the dopamine through van der Waals and hydrophobic bonding. Moving on to the mechanism of action of dopamine stimulator of sympathetic nervous system. Dopamine will act on three different types of receptor and each of them will produce effect which will help people who suffering cardiogenic shock. Dopamine will act on beta-1 receptor which mainly found at myocardial tissue, alpha-1 and alpha-2 at the blood vessels and dopaminergic receptor at the kidney. Stimulation of beta-1 receptor by dopamine will increase the contractile force and heart rate, and it is due to receptor associated with SA and AV node. Besides, the effect of beta receptor activation increase the myocardial electrophysiology by these four steps, which is increase the slope of phase 4 spontaneous depolarizations, increase maximum rate of phase 4 depolarizations, increase conduction velocity, and also increase the refractory period. Stimulation on alpha-1 and alpha-2 receptor will lead to vasoconstriction. Lastly, dopaminergic receptor that are found on the kidney will cause renal vasodilation and improve the renal blood flow and thus increase the glomerular filtration rate. Patients with hypotension will have lower blood pressure due to vasodilation. After administration of dopamine, it causes vasoconstriction and it will increase the blood pressure. Next, we proceed to the main clinical indication or therapeutic of dopamine. Basically, dopamine is used to treat heart failure to improve cardiac contractility especially with patients with hypotension and cardiogenic shock. Besides, dopamine also stimulates beta receptor at heart to increase cardiac output. It also stimulates alpha-1 receptor at the blood vessels to increase the total peripheral resistance. These two conditions will increase blood pressure. Plus, it can enhance the perfusion of the kidney and splenic area. Next, as for the adverse effect of the dopamine, the common adverse effects are occur in gastrointestinal tract which are nausea and vomiting. It can also cause headache and anxiety. In the aspect of respiratory system, dopamine can cause shortness of breath or deep snia. Besides, the patient will experience the side effect in cardiovascular system if the drug is taken at high dose that will cause cardiac conduction abnormality such as ventricular arrhythmia and also the atrial fibrillation. When dopamine is given in a low dose, it can cause vasodilation that will lead to hypotension. However, dopamine can rapidly metabolize thus it has short half-life. So, we have come to the last part of the video which is the appropriateness of the topic. In short, cardiogenic shock can be treated by first line and second line agent. It is proof that dopamine can be used as the first line agent as it is drug of choice for cardiogenic shock specifically in patients with hypotension. So, what are the other drugs that can be used in cardiogenic shock? It is inotropic agent that can act as second line drug which are Dobutamine, no epinephrine, epinephrine, and also isoproteinol. To conclude, we have explained about cardiogenic shock and the drug of choice, which is dopamine. We have also explained briefly regarding the discovery of dopamine, the medicinal chemistry, as well as its mechanism of action. Furthermore, we had mentioned about the therapeutic indication along with their adverse effect. With all of that, it can be emphasized that dopamine is the drug of choice for cardiogenic shock.